Um, Reverend Ortez, um, in your conversation about the Barrio Youth Initiative, you talk about training um, like volunteers and lay clergy in the local uh, churches who are working with young people. And I'm just curious, what do you think that says about the future of theological education? Hmm. What should we be thinking about? What, what innovation should we be making? What do we need to keep our sights on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess to start off with, it, it, it needs to uh, be very contextual and very practical. Mm. Um, in Philadelphia, uh, with uh, the number of Latinos that we have, over 180,000, um, there's not one full-time paid youth minister in our city that serves the Latino community. And so that's a significant challenge because that means that um, the, the average youth worker is, of course, underpaid then, undervalued, under-resourced. And so... Um, and overused. And overused, <laughs> and in some cases, abused. <laughs> and so, um, uh, so those that end up working with young people are uh, either assigned or they just see the need and they jump in. Um, whether or not they have a theological framework, whether or not they have the principles in place. They just uh, love young people and want to see a difference in their lives. Um, and so with the Body Youth Initiative, that's the, the pretty much has, has been our targeted audience, if you will, equipping that, that, that youth leader. Now, in other cases, um, there are uh, participants that have degrees. Uh, uh, I have one currently now that has dual master's degrees. And so, uh, but never had the opportunity to learn about um, the one-on-one -on -one of, of uh, a relationship building and how uh, the relational is transformational. And so getting back to the, uh, the passages in scriptures that talk about the incarnation and, and Christ and God among us and what that means for the most at-risk young person in a community, you don't need a, a degree to do that, right? right? Um, you, you have to be able to believe, have the wherewithal, etc. And so I think uh, uh, we need to reflect more on what uh, a theopraxis looks like mm -hmm. uh, in our context on an ongoing basis uh, that inherits, uh, in many ways, resources that really don't fit in our community, mm -hmm. a biblical understanding that needs to be rethought, um, uh, that looks at, at, at thriving uh, from a different perspective, uh, maybe mm -hmm. from the underground mm -hmm. rather than from those who've never experienced that. And so uh, I think that um, academia can have an amazing conversation with the grassroots and the grassroots with academia mm -hmm. and see what does it look like over the next 10, 20, 30 years uh, for millennials, for Generation Z uh, that's quickly mm -hmm. uh, moving and taking prominence in our mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And I would say that um, if you take how the Bahir Youth Initiative uh, functions, and why it functions that way, that we then ask what are the implications that that has for theological education going forward. So uh, Ruben just talked about the dialogue between you know, academia and this contextualized ministry. Mm -hmm. um, usually theological education has seen itself as the Mecca and being the one from which uh, people are being sent out. But this is kind of different, yeah. right? This is uh, very organic. And um, it has to be um, relevant, or people are not going to feel that the academic pieces can be relevant to what they're doing. And right. you can stay in your little <laughs> place over there, and we could be ha having separate spaces. But we need this cross-fertilization to be taking place, right? That's really important, and I see theological education and and ministry having to move toward creating ecologies of education mm -hmm. where we can't stand alone where we are but we have to be able to see each other as partners mm -hmm. and we have to find new ways of bringing forth from one another what we have that we can learn from one another and that we can have to help sustain one another where we are right theological education is not going to be sustainable the way it is unless you're someplace where they have you know a whole lot of uh, endowment and so forth mm -hmm. it's not and then in that sense 
if that institution stays far from the realities of how the church is emerging in these places and so forth, I don't know who it's going to be in dialogue with. I don't know what mm. that's going to be about. I don't know, you know, how that's going to be shaped, how that thinking is going to be shaped, right? But if we're talking about a thinking that is ministerial thinking and so forth, that is theology with a purpose, mm. with the purpose of bringing forth life, and then you have persons who are dealing with what it means to not only confront death, but to enter into the death, right? So for example, entering into trauma. Right. 80% of the children in the schools in Philadelphia have gone through trauma. And now that means for anyone working in a school that they have to be specially trained to deal with trauma, right? right? At the college, we all have been trained to deal with trauma because we understand that that's what we're working with. When somebody comes to me with all this attitude and so forth and they're all upset about, about something with me and they're like, F this and F mm -hmm. that, I'm like, whoa, this is, right? There's a story behind this. Right. And it's usually a trauma. And right. you're paying attention to the wounds behind the words. Right. Absolutely. Which many people miss. <laughs> Uh, no, they but pay attention I, to the word <laughs> and not to the wound. <laughs> right, and then they and then you have attitude, looking at attitude. That's right. right. Now, now you right. now you're yeah, now you're <laughs> reacting, but you're not responding. To respond, you have to take a pause. You have to ask yourself what's really happening here, and and it's this trauma training that teaches you to do that. And when you take a pause eh, and you become very calm in that setting, eh? so people will say, you know, I came in here, I was all upset, and now. It's like it's very calming being here. and People just want to come in and just sit in my office just because it's calming. Well, what I've learned to do is to speak softly, to speak slowly, to give you some cold water to drink, to have little gadgets for you to play with, right? I have chocolates or, you know, kind of food items there as well because that also, sometimes someone hasn't eaten. And they just come in my office just to have chocolate, mm. but I know it's because they're hungry, right? Mm. So, but you see, so you're dealing with all of these pieces. It's a different training. Yeah. You can't just do Old Testament, New Testament, <laughs> unless Old Testament, New Testament, you're dealing with the trauma that's in those stories. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of trauma in those stories, right? Mm -hmm. So what is it that, how is it, in what light do we need to present those stories so that they connect to the stories of persons? That's where theological education needs to be. Mm. We create these ecologies of education so that we are sustaining the different pieces that are needed. And that includes other entities in the community as well, right? right. If, especially if you're dealing with all of the different dimensions of poverty, for example, in our case. So you have to have ecologies of education and you can cross fertilize and you have to be able to have these a different curriculum a different curriculum. We started talking about a curriculum that includes the facilities, right? We have a, a relational curriculum. Yeah? We have a pedagogy of reflection, mm -hmm. of listening, of listening for the story behind, and mm -hmm. now it's of connecting the story with the gospel story. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot in the, in, in, in the Bible that we've not connected to. There are stories of war, violence, and so forth. How do we connect to that, right? There's right. just horrific pieces that take place. And some of that can really connect to where people are at. And they can find new places of hope. There are stories that we have never even preached. Hmm. And what he's doing with Bahir Youth Initiative is to help people hmm. re-look at those stories, find those stories, and make those connections. Mm -hmm. When those connections take place, that's a whole new setting. And that's where theological education needs to listen and say, where is the activity of God taking place? And how is this speaking to what forms theological education needs to take? 